Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. This is part four in my Big Button Form series. If you haven't watched parts one through three yet, please go watch those first and then come on back. All right, so things are working pretty good. We got our customer form. We can select the vehicle. It pops this up. We got the captions all set. The buttons look good, but now the buttons don't do anything. One thing I want to look at, though, before we actually make these buttons work is I want to make sure we don't run into a situation where we have more than 18 options, right? Because right now this form can only handle 18 options. If you need 30, you're gonna have to make 30 buttons, make a big form, whatever you gotta do. I'm only set up for 18 and I want to let the VBA code know this. Otherwise, if it tries to, you know, write stuff to button 14, it ain't gonna work, we're gonna have a problem. So let's go back into our code. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say up here, I'm gonna use a constant for it because it's a value that never changes, right? Constant max buttons equals 18, just like that. Now we can handle this a couple ways. We could say right here, you know, and X is less than max buttons. But that's kind of a cheesy way to do it. Let's do it, the, let me teach you the right way to do it. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna look at the number of records in the record set before we even start the loop. And if there's too many of them in there, then we'll just tell the user, right? Sorry, you gotta add more. Tell your tell your developer to add more buttons. Pay him more money to update your database. That's something everybody should be doing. Give me the show me the money, right? So what we're gonna do is right here, we're going to check number of records. We have to first move to the last record so we can get an accurate record count. All right, there's a, a property of a record set called the record count, but in order for it to be accurate, you have to first go to the end and then come on back to the beginning. I know it's a pain, but that's just how it works. All right, so move to last record. And we can do that by saying rs.move last. Very simple. Now we can get the record count. Okay, we can say if rs.record count is greater than max buttons, then however you want to handle it, right? Uh, message box error uh, you have more records than buttons uh, pay your developer to <laughs> add more buttons to the form and literally with the way we're building this that's all you have to do is just drop more buttons on the form and make sure they're named correctly that's it the code is versatile it will handle as many buttons as you put in here oh and of course update your max buttons counter in there Okay, now at this point, we can say cancel equals true. I'm gonna change this a little later on, but this will work for now. Um, and then I'm gonna say else, else do some stuff. Cause we've already opened up the record set, right? We wanna make sure we close it down gracefully. So I'm gonna say the else is gonna include all of this stuff, right? So let's indent this, okay? Else, you know, okay to loop, right? And here you can put, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start getting better with my code. If it's only a couple of lines, I usually don't bother with too much commenting, but right, uh, too many records need more buttons. And it's just easier to see that green text in here too, isn't it? All right, and if, and then if there are, it'll message box you, cancel is true, so it'll cancel the open event. And then um, RS close, it closes up that. It'll set these things here, but it's not a big deal because it's gonna close anyways. And we should be able to test it now. Debug compile. Let's try it. Let's um, let's just go in the make table and add, just add some junk. We got 18 buttons, all right? Oh, I got, that's right, we indexed it. All right, okay, all right. These gotta be unique. We got a bunch of unique buttons in here. All right, well, we got 18, all right. Getting there, getting there. Let's make a 19th record. Okay, oop, not see, can't even do this right. <laughs> all right, I heard you there. Okay, let's try it. Click the button and er, you got too many records. Pay your developer to add more. And then, yeah, see, open form is canceled. I think this is why I changed it later um, because that's gonna throw an error on this guy. So what we're gonna do is instead of, instead of utilizing cancel, what I'm going to do right here is just close the form. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another variable up here called force exit as boolean okay and we're going to start it off by saying we'll put it right here force exit equals false okay and then 
instead of this cancel equals true, we're going to say force exit equals true there. And then down here at the bottom, after everything else is processed, we're going to say if force exit, then we're going to do command close ac form me dot name is the name of the form and then ac save yes i've explained why i use ac save yes here in a lot of different videos but basically uh if you're doing design work and you run it without saving it closing it and opening it again you're going to lose your design changes too so that's really just for you oh and i also noticed one more thing i forgot just a minute ago and it's right here we went to the last record we're checking for too many but if we're good, we have to do something here. We have to say rs.move first. We have to go back to the beginning because think of it like a little pointer, right? Right. You go to the last record and if you say, okay, loop to the end of the record set, well, you're already at the end of the record set. So you got to make sure you go RS move first in there. Okay. So instead of trying to cancel this event, we're just going to close the form. Makes sense, right? Save it back out here. Close it, close it, click the button and we're good. See, so we use a little force exit there. If you if your code relies on the form opening and the cancel event is thrown, then it gives an error to the guy who called it. So that's just a, it's a pain. It's easier to handle it this way. All right, so we got it so we can click this. All right, it'll open up the form. Let's get rid of all those bogus records that we just put in there. All right, get rid of this stuff. Unless there's a card that you know of named Das. <laughs> Das Audi, yeah, <laughs> no. All right, so we got this open here. Now, we've assigned each of the buttons a caption. We also need to know the value of the ID of that record, right? Audi is, uh, what is it? Oh, this is, a, you can't, you can't click on it. You know what I'm saying, right? Each one of these guys has an ID. So we need to know what that ID is. Where are we going to put it? I'm going to store it in the button somehow. Where can I put that? Well, there's a nifty property of most controls. If you go to the all tab, come all the way to the bottom. There's a property called tag. What is tag? Whatever you want it to be. You could put whatever you want in there. That's just for you. It's to store some extra information about this particular button or text box or a label or whatever. So I'm going to use that to store the ID of the button. I'm going to put it in the tag property. That way when the button is clicked on, I can read that value and send it back to the calling form. All right. I don't have a tech help video about the tag property. I'm probably going to make one soon. That's on my list. I do cover it in Access Developer 22. If you want to learn more about it, I'll put a link down below. So let's modify our loop. All right. Right in here. We're setting the caption. Let's also set the ID. All right. We'll put that in the tag property. So we're going to come in here. We're going to say me.controls.tag equals RS ID. See why I alias those as ID and button caption earlier? It doesn't matter to me what the ID is. Is it a make ID, model ID, customer ID, whatever? It doesn't matter. It's just ID as far as this form is concerned. Okay. Now, let's quickly verify that that worked. Okay. And we're going to do that by using a function that we'll put in the button. Now, you can use a function in any of these buttons in the events here. I call them event handler functions. I don't know what their, their proper name is, but basically you can make a function and then you can put it in the property for the event and you don't have to make a separate build event for each button, right? Right click, build event, right click, build event. You don't have to do that 18 times. You just do it once for all the buttons. Okay, so back in my code, I'm gonna come up top here. I'm gonna create a function. It has to be a function. You can't use a sub. Private function, because only these buttons are gonna call it. We're gonna call it button clicked not clipped clicked <laughs> button clicked and then in here we're going to message box the tag of the active button the active control right so it's me dot active control dot tag all right so me dot active control will be whatever button currently is the one in focus the one the user clicked on whatever its tag property is i want you to message box that Okay, now we just have to set this as the on click event handler for each of those buttons. So it calls this function when the button is clicked, right? So come back out here. Actually, let me copy that to my clipboard first. Come over here, copy, come over here, 
We're going to select all of the buttons. This is why it's, this is why it's powerful because you can do it to all of them at once. Come right here to the on click, right? Multiple selection. We got all these buttons selected right here. It's going to be equals that function name equals button clicked. So all of these buttons now will call that function when they're clicked on. All right, hit tab. Now save it, close it, select the vehicle, click Audi, boom, there's number five. That's Audi's ID because we stored it in the tag property, right? Chevy is two, Ford is one. See, now we know what button was clicked on. All right, we're just message boxing it for now, but in the next lesson, we're going to be able to figure out how to return that value to whoever called it. And we'll talk about that in tomorrow's video, which would be what, part five are we up to? Yeah. So, you know the drill. Tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. If you remember, you can watch it right now. I'm going to keep recording. I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll, folks. Um, but that's going to do it for part four, folks. There's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, 
and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.